Another year, another Panasonic convention, this time in sunny Amsterdam. But this year is different, because this year there's no plasma. Sadly, the rumours are true, and for Panasonic at least, plasma is now dead. So let's take a look at the new TV lineup that they claim will not only replace plasma, but could be even better. So I'm joined now by Craig Cunningham from Panasonic to talk about your new TV lineup for 2014. But before we do that, let's address the elephant in the room, Craig. Um, this year, no plasma. Do you think that you've, you've let down the enthusiast? No, no, we definitely haven't left down the enthusiast and um, <clears throat> I think if anyone knows the enthusiast, uh, it's, it's us. And I think next year we're committed to uh, bringing LEDs to the market which will surpass plasma picture performance. I think we're showing how we're doing that in a number of ways here at this exhibition. So, uh, no, we don't feel like we're letting anyone down. We're just moving things on, you know, we're going to the next, uh, to the next uh, level with uh, panel technology. You made some fairly bold claims about LED, LCD TVs and how they can rival Plasma, given how good the ZT65 was last year, I mean it was a very apex of te technology, do you honestly think you can do that with an LED LCD and if you can, why didn't you do it before? Well I think uh, you're right, the ZT was the, uh, the pinnacle of uh, picture performance for us from a plasma and we're really really proud of that and that's exactly why we're showing that model directly compared to our future generation of 4K LEDs because that's the comparison that people really want to see. So, uh, and why did we not do that before? Well, I mean, honestly speaking, we never really had to do it before, you know. I think we, uh, we created a, a product for the enthusiast, the ZT, uh, and we also created some, uh, some fantastic LEDs as well. I mean, we've won many awards for our LEDs as well. It's just now, without plasma, we're taking all of that technology and all of that knowledge from plasma and putting that into our LEDs. So we're trying to make an LED better than a plasma. We've never had to do that before. Obviously, the big news this year will be 4K, but um, what's the 1080p lineup going to be for 2014? Yeah, so in 2014 we have a very large lineup of 1080p as well. It's very, very important to us still. Uh, so you'll notice that we've changed the uh, the lettering, the random lettering that we used to assign to to ranges, and we've gone with a much more easy to understand format. So we Good. have the uh, all of the series will start with A. Uh, then you'll have the uh, the screen size. Then you'll have the uh, the model uh, smart or uh, 4K, which will be defined by the X. And then you have the uh, the series. So we have four going all the way up to nine. So yeah, 1080p, very, very important to us. The 4 Series is the entry level part of our range. That's non-smart uh, Full HD LED. We then step up to the AS500. So this is smart, Wi-Fi built in. Okay, and then we go to the AS600. So AS600 is really important for us next year because that's where we introduce free time. So free time for us, so this is, uh, this is something new for our platform and this is gonna be our key go-to-market strategy for 2014. So free time gives you all of the great catch-up services, so BBC iPlayer, ITV Player, 4OD and Demand 5, and it gives you that on industry-leading platform as well. So that's available through terrestrial, so Freeview, and also available through satellite. So we cover both within our range, we have satellite tuners and terrestrial tuners. We'll have that on 90% of our range for 2014. After the 6 Series, we have the 650. So this is where we introduce uh, 3D into the lineup. So again, the design over the 600. That's active 600, or passive 3D? Uh, that will be passive 3D. And there's a good design differentiation between the 600 and the 650 as well, because that's also important in the uh, in the step-up story. Going up to the 740, so now you're getting towards the top end of the uh, 1080 range. So here you'll see again the design difference between the 650 and 740 is significant. You're getting a camera built in, but now you're getting a satellite tuner and a terrestrial tuner. So here you can access free time via satellite or via terrestrial free view. Then we go to the AS800. So there you really are at the very top end of our uh, of our 2K range. And you'll see here the design uh, has a similar uh, look and feel between the top end 2K and the 4K model. So we're bringing that design to the AS802. And here you'll get two satellite tuners and two terrestrial tuners. Then we go to the AX802. So this is our flagship 4K model for the first half of the year, available in 50 inch, 58 and 65. From the 4K model uh, AX802, we go up to the AX900. So this is the model that we're really heroing as being our flagship in picture performance. This is the model that we're showing versus the ZT to show actually we're surpassing ZT picture performance with a 4K LED. And how are you doing that? Well, there's many different ways that we're doing it. I mean, the two areas that we've really had to focus on, one obviously is black level, the other two is the, uh, is the color reproduction. So you'll see with our studio master color system, actually we're actually being able to produce better colors on the LED than what we did on the plasma. So that's something we're really proud of. And with the full array of backlight technology, we're able to uh, control the contrast ratios and provide contrast ratios which we think rival the ZT. But it's not all about black level and about color reproduction. There's many areas of picture quality as, you, as, you, as you're aware of. You know, we've, we've improved on the noise factor from plasma to LED, the sharpness of, the, of the, uh, the picture. And also you're getting a 4K image instead of plasma's 2K image. So there's many different improvements which overall leads us to say 
AX900 will be better than the best plasma we've ever made. Okay, that's, that's fighting talk where I come from, but using an, a full array LED backlight, I mean, that's an obvious way of improving the black levels, but it's generally not used because it's quite expensive to implement. What kind of price point are you looking at then with the, with the top of the line TV? Well, you know, I mean, we, we always make sure that our TVs are competitive. Um, you know, and this TV will launch the, the second half of the year, so pricing for that is still really, really tentative. But, you know, we'll make sure it's competitive and it stacks up within our range. I mean, yeah, it's an expensive way to, uh, to get that kind of pitch performance, but, you know, it's about giving a product for the enthusiast. You know, the ZT wasn't the cheapest TV on the market either, but it sold very well because of the pitch performance. The AX900 will be no different. And I'm glad to see all the TVs here are nice and flat, no curves going on. Any, any plans to start curving your TVs? No, what we are showing is curved OLED, uh, curved both ways as we did, uh, as we did at CES. So uh, showing that we have the technology and we can do it. I think we're very much sitting on the fence at the moment um, to see what the uptake is going to be in the market. So it will be really interesting to see. You know, it has, its, it has its pluses and its minuses. It's great and it's new to look at. Viewing angle restrictions there, maybe. So there's a lot of uns unanswered questions. It wasn't our key uh, issue this year. It wasn't really what we needed to do. You know, we, it was all about replacing plasma, make a TV uh, produce great pitch performance before we start thinking about curving it. So that's, that's really what we focused on. So you briefly mentioned OLED. Um, last year you were talking about your printing method, you were showing it at CES, but uh, it seems to be missing an action this year. What's happened with OLED? Yeah, so we're still showing um, here with the printing method, and except for now we're curving it, where we've never really shown that before, apart from CES. Uh, so it's still something that's, that's kind of there. We're still working on it. Um, you know, as soon as it's ready, we're going to be the ones bringing it to market, but you know, I don't think at the moment it's quite there, so we'll focus on 4K LED for, uh, for the top of our range. So, I'm as rubbish at 4K gaming as I am at reviewing TVs. Of course, Panasonic make more than just TVs. They also have a wide range of audio products, as Adam Marshall explains. Yeah, so we've got a um, really exciting range for next year. Um, we're really focusing on adding channels to the soundbar. Um, we've done a lot of customer research and uh, one of the things that was negative about soundbars from the end customers is the fact they've lost a bit of the dialogue sound. So we've got dedicated centre speakers in the HDB 680 and the HDB 880, which are the two top of the range ones. Um, wireless subwoofers from the 480 upwards, which is the mid of the mid range, which is very important for the customer. And one big growth area which we think is going to be next year is for uh, speaker boards. Um, there's a couple of models already in the market, our HTE 80 launched in October and we'll also have the HTE 180 which is a similar spec but fits the bigger TVs for next year. Okay, and obviously the other area that's interesting from the point of view of our readership is 5.1 systems, 7.1 yep. systems. What have you got in terms of, um, you know, sort of all-in-one systems for the home? Um, so next year for the Blu-ray home theatre systems really focusing on premium models. Um, we've got the 885 which will be a four tall boy model and the 505 which has got four tall uh, tables top speakers um, but we've really focused on the quality of the product the build quality so we've got aluminium finish and wood cabinet speakers um, we think that obviously people who want the surround sound uh, system they really want the top top quality and uh, the full surround sound effect as if it's a cinema in your home so you mentioned the cinema obviously in the cinema they're adding height channels even overhead channels is there a possibility that Panasonic might introduce that on their own models? Yeah, I mean, on those two systems that I just mentioned, uh, we've got a virtual surround sound and uh, we're using Dolby technology in that to add uh, like 36 virtual speakers um, to add a sort of depth from the height, uh, height as well. I mean, in our sound demo room today, we're featuring uh, a demonstration of the 505 model. So, so that's sort of 36 speakers all the way around then? Yeah, and height and as well. Height as well. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Another big growth area is obviously streaming. What sort of products have Panasonic got in line for 2014? So I think a very exciting, as you say, big growth area. Um, and there'll be a lot of manufacturers launching multi-room products next year, but um, ours is, will be the All Series. Um, basically, uh, that will be a chip from Qualcomm a huge chip manufacturer um, in smartphones and tablets etc and uh, our focus on that is obviously it will be able to do multi-room from music subscription services from your home music library and from internet radio and um, our focus is again is on sound quality so with that top of the range model will integrate our digital amplifier which we've used in our blu-ray home theaters and our sound bars and incorporate that into the multi-room area it's all very well having a snazzy new 4K TV, but one of the big problems is finding any 4K content to actually watch on it. Maybe this is the answer. It's a Panasonic GH4. Who'd have thought they could fit a 4K sensor into a camera this small? We're going to talk about it in a little bit more detail with Mark Baber. Well, it's an amazing achievement. It's, uh, as you said, 4K. It's uh, one of uh, the first 4K consumer cameras in the marketplace. So for both stills and videography, it's quite amazing. 
when you hook it up to a 4K television, the feedback, the playback is absolutely astonishing. Crisp resolution, colour reproduction and uh, refresh rates, fantastic. What sort of features does it offer to uh, the, sort of the photography enthusiast? Oh, amazing amounts. A huge difference in the product from the GH3 is the autofocus system, so it's more accurate, a lot faster, uh, so it reduces any warbling or hunting, so that's really key when you're obviously focusing on uh, close-ups or uh, portraits, landscapes, and that's applicable then also in video, so we've improved um, focus peaking, so that's now new on the GH4, which was missing on the GH3, so that can be able to pinpoint uh, the fine detail that maybe you can't see with the naked eye. So that's a real key uh, ad addition to especially uh, video making. Um, on top of that, magnesium body, splash proof, dust proof. It's an amazing outdoor camera as well as uh, you know, for use in the studio. So what are the specific video capabilities of the GH4? Well, the highest bit rate uh, it can shoot at is cinema 4K, so that's 24p at 100 megabits a second. So, uh, very, very fast transfer uh, bit rate, uh, but cine uh, quality uh, of resolution that you obviously through a 4K monitor or TV looks absolutely astonishing. Uh, but at the same time, all intra 200 megabits in full HD and also uh, 4K standard as well. So it's not just one level of 4K, it's also two, both the cinema and standard for 4K. And it goes right down to VGA as well. So it's three times faster than the GH3 uh, and a lot faster than any of the previous GH models we've made as well. Well, that's it for another Panasonic convention. We're getting the TVs in for review as soon as we can, and we'll find out if they live up to Panasonic's claims. Until then, I'm Steve Withers, and thank you for watching.